Hey friend, welcome to my channel Karina Lude where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars in history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upload. Now let's get into this video. Today we are talking about the icon Pam Greer. Only I think there is something missing from your life. Something that could make you so happy. Ladies. I want justice for all of them. And I want justice for all the other people whose lives are bought and sold so that a few big shots can climb up on their backs and laugh at the law. This video is a lot. It's pretty heavy. We're going to talk about some pretty heavy topics because she's been through a lot. Yes, we are going to talk about her very wild and chaotic relationship with Richard Pryor where she discovered some things, okay? We're going to talk about her childhood, the industry, all of the things that she had to go through in the industry. But we are going to start on a lighter note to get some of this generation who may not be too familiar with who Pam Greer is familiar with her accomplishments as well as her beauty secrets and hair hacks because she was known as a fashion icon and we're gonna get into her childhood. So Pam Greer, the multi-talented American actress and singer, has had a long and illustrious career of achievements. Known for her groundbreaking work in the 1970s, she has received several accolades including nominations for an Emmy Award, a Golden Globe Award, a Screen Actors Guild Award, a Satellite Award, and a Saturn Award. However, despite her undeniable talent and trailblazing efforts, she remains one of the best actors never Ever to have received an Academy Award nomination. Greer is most recognized for her starring role in the string of films produced by American International Pictures and New World Pictures. These films include a mix of action, black exploitation, and women in prison films that propelled her to worldwide fame. Throughout her career, Greer appeared in over 70 films and TV shows, proving her versatility as an actress in various genres. One of the reasons Greer was never able to win an Academy Award was because black exploitation film stars weren't taken seriously by the establishment. Black exploitation films were a unique genre that emerged in the 1970s, characterized by their low budget approach, unpolished style, and soundtracks that combined funk, soul, and jazz. They typically featured African American actors in leading roles and explored taboo topics such as substance use, violence, and racial inequality. And though they were low budget, they were really entertaining and grew in popularity even amongst white media, even though they didn't take them seriously many of them were watching okay and this is where Pulp Fiction came from and Quentin Tarantino who makes these type of movies now was such a huge fan of Pam Greer he was her biggest fan and even said that there was no one like her she was the first female action star period of any color and there was no one for her to be compared to so even though you'll see a lot of articles that would you know look down at black exploitation films and the controversy of certain topics. It was very popular for its time and a lot of people didn't want to give credit where credit was due. Because yeah, black exploitation films were controversial, but they played a significant role in black cinema and culture. They challenged the status quo and gave black actors and filmmakers a platform to tell their own stories. Pam Greer was one of the pioneering figures of this movement and helped to redefine the portrayal of black women in cinema. Her impact and legacy can still be felt in the film industry today. Pam Greer is a true icon of American cinema. She broke barriers and challenged stereotypes, carving out a place for herself in an industry that was not always welcoming to actors of color. And although she was never able to win an Academy Award, her contributions to cinema will never be forgotten. Her talent, courage, and unwavering commitment to her craft will continue to inspire future generations of actors and filmmakers for years to come. Now let's talk about this beauty icon secrets. I always thought that Meg the Stallion looked like she could be her daughter, right? Meg looks so much like Pam, it's crazy, especially in this new era with the afro that Meg has been doing. Looks like it could be her little sister or her daughter. When I went to try to find side-by-side -side photos of them, because it was just like, oh my goodness, they look so much alike. I found that she did speak on Meg the Stallion, gave her some advice. She also liked to praise younger stars that are coming up, especially when Lizzo was getting a lot of hate. She was, you know, speaking up for her. She said this, she said, I love Cardi and I love WAP. I love Meg The Stallion. I told her, you and your artistry are beautiful. People are gonna punk you because The Stallion is a male horse. But 
there's some really foxy mares, end quote. And she said this because as we're gonna see in this video, Pam Gray did get a lot of flack for her height. She's pretty tall, <laughs> you know, we're gonna see that. And so a lot of the men in the industry were intimidated by her. They had some jokes, some unsavory things to do and they wouldn't give her work. So she went through it and she was kind of giving Meg that because you know, Meg goes through that a lot with her body. Some encouragement. Pam Gray is a legendary actress and fashion icon who has influenced generations of women with her unique style. She is best known for her bold, and daring fashion choices, which have been a source of inspiration for many people. Pam Gray's fashion style is all about being bold and confident. She is not afraid to take risks and try new things, and she's always looking stunning, no matter what she wears, even now. Her love for fashion began early in life, and since then, she has become an expert in mixing different patterns, textures, and colors. Pam's style can be described as eclectic, funky, and sexy. She loves to wear long flowing dresses, oversized hats, and vibrant prints. She is also known for her trademark afro and her love of bold jewelry such as large hoop earrings and chuckling necklaces. And as far as her hair, which let's be serious, her hair is gorgeous. One of Pam Gray's signature features is her gorgeous hair. She is known for her iconic afro, which she has worn in various styles throughout her career, which she says, hey, just grow it out and pick it out if you want it to be voluminous and big and rock your natural curls. Pam's beauty tips are all about keeping things natural. She loves to use natural products and is a big fan of coconut coconut oil for her skin and hair. Pam also believes that drinking plenty of water and eating a healthy diet is what helped her to achieve her beautiful complexion. Now as far as her hobbies, favorite colors, Pam Gray is a woman of many talents and interests, but aside from acting and fashion, she is also an avid reader and writer. Her favorite colors are vibrant shades of reds, yellows, and oranges, which reflects her vibrant personality. When it comes to her beauty, Pam's natural glow is something to admire. Her unique features and effortless confidence confidence makes her a true beauty icon. Pam Gray's personality can be summed up in one word, confident. She exudes confidence and self-assurance in everything she does, which makes her a true role model for women all over the world. Her friends have described her as being warm, funny, and caring. She is someone who is always there for her loved ones, and she has a heart of gold. But when it comes to her health and diet, she did face some setbacks. In 1988, Gray received a life-changing diagnosis of stage four cancer. Despite living a healthy lifestyle, running six miles a day, and being a self-described health nut, she was diagnosed with cancer. Following her cancer diagnosis, Greer was faced with a difficult decision. She could either give up or she could fight. Fortunately, she chose the latter. She began to focus even more on her health and wellness, making significant changes to her diet and exercise routine. Greer's diet is primarily plant-based with a focus on fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and lean protein sources. She also includes healthy fats such as avocado and extra virgin olive oil in her diet. Her favorite food is quinoa, which she finds to be very versatile, and she also likes Brussels sprouts, etc. In addition to her healthy eating habits, Greer also made changes to her fitness routine. She started practicing yoga, which she found to be very helpful in managing the stress and anxiety that comes with a cancer diagnosis. She's also continued to run and exercise regularly, but in a more mindful way. Greer's experience with cancer taught her the importance of taking care of herself. She became more aware of the toxins in her environment and made changes to reduce her exposure. She also recommends regular cancer screening and encourages others to take their health seriously. Now, as far as her childhood, Pam Gray's childhood was marked by frequent moves due to her father's military career, causing her to attend various schools throughout the United States and in England. She was born in May 26, 1949 in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and comes from a diverse mix of African-American, Hispanic, Chinese, Filipino, and Cheyenne heritage. Pam's mother was a nurse and a homemaker, while her father worked as a mechanic and technical sergeant in the United States Air Force. Despite growing up in a time of intense racial tension, Pam and her family were able to avoid much of the segregation and racism that was a daily experience for many Black Americans. When the family lived in England, they were one of the few Black families in their town, but they faced no over inequality compared to what Pam's family experienced when they returned to the United States. However, as Pam reflects on her childhood, she still knows of the harsh inequalities against Black Americans that existed in the U.S. at the time. She remembers how they were unable to obtain bus 
restaurant services, eat at certain restaurants, or use certain restrooms. Her family was even barred from trying on clothing at some department stores until 1969. I was very quiet, Ms. Greer recalled her childhood, and she stuttered when she did talk, and we're going to see why later. Growing up, Greer was a good student who dreamed of becoming a doctor, saying, when I was a younger girl, I never thought of acting, she remembers. I never thought of television, of fans, movie stars, signing autographs, and never crossed my mind, end quote. Now, here's where, trigger warning, we're going to talk about being touched without your consent, okay? So you can kind of skip ahead. Hopefully, YouTube already puts the chapters, all right? So Pam Greer is a legendary actress known as the queen of black exploitation films. However, behind the scenes, she struggled with a debilitating stutter that lasted for years. In her memoir, Foxy, My Life in Three Acts, Greer finally revealed why. Greer shared that she was sensually taken advantage of at the young age of six by two boys in her neighborhood. This experience and a similar one at age 18 caused her to experience chronic stuttering which lasted into her adulthood. According to Deadline, it nearly happened a third time. She didn't include that situation in her book because her publisher felt it was too much. She said, when I fought off a 300 pound retired football player, a family friend who was supposed to come out to mentor me, I suffered scratches, abrasions, everything, but I beat the ish out of him with furniture and walked away from it end quote. Greer stated that all of this stuff happening to her left her feeling powerless and violated, leading to a loss of confidence and self-esteem. Greer downplayed her appearance after the violations and the false belief that she would be less likely to be attacked if she weren't so pretty, basically. Let me look as ugly as possible so that maybe this could deter the attackers. Greer disclosed the brutality she had experienced for the first time. Her confession, however, was not warmly received. Her then boyfriend found out and declared Greer tainted after she told him. Imagine your boyfriend, you tell them what happened to you and they tell, ooh, now you tainted, you've been touched. It is heart-wrenching to learn that Greer carried this trauma with her for so long without speaking out. It is a stark reminder of how much silence can hurt us by even making people stutter. It can manifest, you know? Silence can manifest in other ways. So sometimes when you see someone stuttering, you don't know what they could have went through. Not saying that's the case for everyone, but a lot of people, it does come from trauma. She is a true inspiration to many for sharing her story in the hopes of helping others. Despite these challenges, Greer has said that her upbringing taught her to be independent and self-reliant. Her family remembers her as a creative and curious child who was always exploring and learning. Pam Greer persevered and participated in beauty contests to fund her college education. She was crowned Miss Colorado in 1967 and went on to compete in the Miss Universe and Miss World's pageant. Her family has spoken highly of her as a child, with her father in particular being very proud of her success in beauty contests. Now let's get into her career. Pam Gray is a trailblazing actress who broke barriers as an African-American woman in Hollywood. She started her career in the film industry as a switchboard operator at American International Pictures in Los Angeles in 1967, but it was her run of iconic roles in Roger Corman, Women in Prison, films such as The Big Doll House, which was one of my favorite, Women in Cages and A Big Bird Cage that catapulted her to fame. Greer's talent was quickly recognized by director Jack Hill, who gave her her first starring role in the 1971 film Coffee, which was another amazing one. Greer's role as a vigilante nurse seeking revenge for her sister made her the first African-American female to headline an action film. This was a groundbreaking achievement at a time when black women in Hollywood were often relegated to playing subservient roles to white men. Despite her talent and success. However, Greer faced many difficulties and obstacles in the industry. She had to overcome, you know, the racial side of it and discrimination to reach her goals as far as being a woman. The odds were all against her. In an interview with The Guardian, Greer spoke about how she was once told that she was too dark to play a Bond girl when she wanted to be a Bond girl. Yikes. She also spoke about not getting work because of her physique, her height, as we're stating with the Meg The Stallion. She said, and I quote, I'm taller than everybody in Hollywood. No one eats. They're small and skinny. I'm a tall, big bones sister. Sometimes I won't get work because I'm too tall for the leading man. I was going to play Tina Turner and what's love got to do with it. Tina's 5'1", I'm 5'8". Put on shoes, I'm 6'2". Who's going to play Ike? Lawrence Fishburne, I said. I said, I'm taller than him. I saw his one man play in New York. He's not going to be able to throw my big ASS across the room, end quote. But, you know, I love Miss Angela Bassett. That role was for her for Tina. Okay, girl? <laughs> 
And she continues saying, you know, I had to bump heads with a lot of men in the industry, Gurr says. They were not comfortable with showing a progressive black female in an action role. As a strong woman, I was seen as a threat. There was a fear that women would mimic me in real life. I remember certain people saying, oh, she's taking our jobs. She's castrating men. As far as I was concerned, I thought, we don't need to walk behind you. We should walk besides you, end quote. But despite the obstacles she faced, Greer persevered and blazed a path for other black actresses to follow. In his review of Coffee, critic Roger Ebert praised Greer for her physicality and realistic portrayal of her character. He noted that she possessed a physical life missing from many other attractive actresses, end quote. And I have to say, I agree. Now, let's get into her relationships because this is where it gets toxic. So Pam Greer's relationship with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was not entirely smooth sailing. They met before he became a Muslim and started dating. However, after he converted to Islam and changed his name, it seemed like there were differences in their beliefs. Kareem proposed to Pam but with a condition that she must convert to Islam as well. When Pam refused, Kareem gave her an ultimatum saying that he was going to marry a converted Muslim woman who was already prepared for him. Once you become Muslim, you might appreciate another wife, he added. Pam, who wasn't comfortable with Kareem's demands, declined his proposal and their relationship ended. Kareem got married to a Muslim woman the same day. Can y'all believe that? According to Pam, Kareem's decisions to call off the wedding was because he wanted to be with someone who shared his religious beliefs in Pam's words, and I quote, I couldn't make him happy, end quote. She went on to write about him in her book stating, and I quote, one day I waited for my boyfriend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in his Malibu home. He was returning from several road games and he was now a Muslim. When he came through the doors with his friends, they had also converted. I ran up to hug him. He moved back as if I had bad breath or contagious skin disease. Nice to see you, Pam, he said, and that was it. Now that they had converted, they could speak to me, but there was no touching allowed, no intimate or personal conversations. In fact, I wasn't supposed to speak to them at all, unless I was answering specific questions. I stood there awkwardly when Kareem said in a quiet voice, you're supposed to leave the room now, Pam. I walked out of the room feeling upset and humiliated. Pam said Kareem ended up getting pissed off with her. And she said, suddenly Kareem was standing at the door to the bedroom grinning, can you make us some sandwiches? After I made the sandwiches, he said, you have to go now. You can take your sandwich with you. I left and walked towards Malibu Beach. I changed into a halter top and cutoffs. One of Kareem's friends saw me and called him. Kareem was irate when I got back home and he read me the riot act about disgracing him on the beach. He said, you have to be covered, arms, legs, and head. Only your hands can be seen. Needless to say, our relationship didn't last much longer after this incident, end quote. After their breakup, the two remained cordial and didn't have any bad blood between them. They respected each other's decisions and moved on with their lives. And in her book, Pam wrote that Kareem was a good man and that she held no grudges against him. They just didn't agree about some stuff. While promoting her 1973 film Coffee, Greer crossed paths with actor and comedian Freddie Prince. They started dating and spoke about getting married, but due to Prince's history of, you know, sadness, depression, and substance use, she was hesitant to have a child with him. After she broke up with him, they still talked and and unfortunately, he ended up taking his own life and, you know, very tragic. And she was one of the last individuals that he spoke to. Now, let's get into Richard Pryor. Pam Gray and Richard Pryor's relationship was toxic and turbulent to say the least. They were introduced to Pam's ex-boyfriend, Freddie Prince, but it wasn't until they both starred in the movie, Grease Lightning, that they started dating. Despite Pam's best efforts to help Richard with his substance addiction, their relationship was plagued with substance use. Pam even admitted that her sensual relationship with Pryor caused Coca-Cola to enter her system, which resulted in medical diagnosis that shocked her to the core. I went to the doctor today. You ain't sick, are you? No, I'm not sick. <laughs> Thank God for that. One of the most shocking instances occurred in 1980 when Pryor poured 151 proof rum on himself and set himself on fire following a Coca-Cola binge. This event made headlines and was just one of the many dangerous incidents during his life. Their relationship came to an end and after Pam visited her doctor and discovered a medical condition caused by a buildup of Coca-Cola residue in her cervix and 
you know, areas, her womanly parts, her doctor asked if Pryor had dipped his parts in Coca-Cola before their sensual encounter, which raised more red flags for the concerned actress. She refuted that claim to her doctor. She's saying, not that I know of, it's not like he has a pile of Coca-Cola next to the bed and he dips his, you know, thing in it before we do it, she told the medic. The doctor said, according to her memoir, we have a serious problem here. If he's not putting it on his skin directly, then it's worse because the Coca-Cola is in his seminal fluid. The doctor then wondered if her mouth ever went numb while having, while using it on him, you know, for pleasure, whatever. YouTube guys, YouTube. It's clear that their relationship was one that was rife with dysfunction and anger. And in the end, Pam Greer had to prioritize her own health and well-being ultimately leading to their breakup. Greer's exes have included legendary boxing promoter Jimmy Big Will Wheeler, Soul Train announcer Don Cornelius, and NBA great Wilt Chamberlain. Greer became engaged to RCA Records executive Kevin Evans in 1998, but the couple split up the following year. And she doesn't have kids and she's never been married. He said her life was way too busy, way too wild for her to even bring a child into this world. Pam continues to act in films while also fighting stigma surrounding those living with HIV AIDS. She she has had not one but two honorary doctorates and in 2011 she was awarded a doctor of humane letters as an honorary degree from the university of maryland eastern shore that same year langston university awarded her with a doctor of science in honor and she is just minding her business and her ranch living her quiet country life okay very happy and at peace and she is in the works of making a biopic for her movie and i think meg should play her <laughs> I really think so but she is working on that I don't know if it's been casted but I'm excited to see a biopic on her life because she lived a life and people don't give her credit for being the first woman female despite color action film stars where she did a lot of stunts oftentimes without a bra on <laughs> you know these directors were a lot and yeah there's been some controversy some think pieces of people especially in that era with black exploitation because the themes were pretty harsh there was even race play and one of her films and you know a lot of people found it degrading etc but then there's the arguments that it was actually empowering because it was showing the woman being sensual but still boss like and independent and what we honor today right so it's a mix comment below what you think and if you're into black exploitation films which ones are your favorite which was your favorite pam Grimm movies i love coffee and i love Fr friday foster that was one of my first films i ever seen <laughs> when i was a kid of her and you guys might be interested it's here on youtube full length there are some of the black exploitation films that are here on youtube full length so you guys can check some of them out comment below who else would you guys like to see i love you guys so much thank you for tuning in and if you like the music you're listening to the link is in the description support my brother until next time yeah.